Hello Egyptians! Today, the story of, of today is just... Uh, it's so... It's so inspiring. It's so inspiring. Uh, it's one of the few times that I can tell uh, I'm actually proud to be Italian because this guy, Belzoni, Giovanni Battista Belzoni, I, I was like, so when if you go in the Catherine pyramid, which you can't go because <laughs> you're not allowed to go these days, if you go in the chamber, there is written on the wall uh, a graffiti which says Coperta da Giovanni Belzoni, 1800 and something. And and I was like, another Italian <laughs> making a name home for himself, uh, going in abroad and, uh, uh, I don't know, doing some graffiti on ancient uh, sculptures and <laughs> in the pyramids. And I was like, fuck, no, I mean, please, no. And then I, I, and then I, like, I deep dive in a little bit into the story of this guy. I was like, and I was like, Man, this guy's a legend. This guy is a legend. So and uh, just and I was like, the the story of the life of this guy it tells you how much of our lives are shaped by invisible hands and uh, that you don't have to despair in times of when your life is getting in, in dark situations and like where you don't see the light and where you like in the in a dark uh, spot you don't have to worry because look at the story of this guy it's like every time he, he was in a, <laughs> in a bad situation he was like the next <laughs> the next day he suddenly had like epiphanies so and and it didn't just have one <laughs> moment. It had so many. So I I I'm really really happy to share this story with you because it gives you it gives us uh, you know it's gives us hope for our lives. Uh, this this story is just a such a hopeful story, you know, and um, so. Yeah, uh, let's begin. This is uh, like, yeah, just take your popcorns because this is like a perfect story for a Hollywood movie. It's amazing, it's amazing. So, let's see. So I, I, it's um, it's gonna be I don't know if it's gonna be a long video or not. It's just to tell the story of of this of, of Belzoni. It can even take like whatever like hours and hours. So um, let's let's start. Let's start. So Giovanni Battista Belzoni was born in 1778 in Padova in Italy. Well, back then there was no Italy. It was uh, under the uh, Venice consulate like Padova was under Venice and um, so so what happens is that um, he was not really like happy he he was a dude that was uh, in constant need of movement and uh, he at at the age of 13 uh, first of all he was son of a barber and uh, at the age of 13 he just wanted to escape from home and uh, so he took his little brother, uh, nine years old brother, and uh, just ran <laughs> towards uh, Rome. He wanted to go to Rome, and uh, he basically <laughs> he reached Bologna and um, stayed there for a while, and then uh, he eventually got into Rome, uh, where he, you know, realized his dream. Uh, he he became a barber. <laughs> so, and uh, but but the thing is that in Rome, at least, what what we know is that he developed his uh, skills as a um, as a draw as a as a paint not a painter but somebody that can draw like his drawing skills, and also he started to develop his uh, hydraulics skills, which will be very important later on in his life. And what happens in Rome is that uh, he stayed there for a while, and then Napoleon comes. And uh, he was not very happy about that, probably, so he just escaped again. And uh, he 
went back to Padova, where the little brother stayed, and uh, but he was still not uh, happy about it. He was like, I can't stay in Padova. I just, I don't, I can't. And so uh, eventually he goes to the Netherlands. He migrates to the Netherlands, and what happens in the Netherlands is that. Um, he um, probably there he actually put uh, some his skills in, uh, of the hydraulic skills maybe he puts hands on uh, in, in that stage of his life but uh, um, but soon after he I mean Napoleon was conquering all over so it's like so 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 after after a while then he, he just <laughs> escaped from the from, from from there and went to London because it was the only place like Napoleon safe let's say um, and so what happens in London is basically um, and, uh, Belzoni was a big guy and was like two meters tall big man and uh, he was eventually he ended up working uh, in the show business of the time which was the circus and it's super nice because <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, and so 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 he became like known to be like this uh, Herculean, the, the Italian Hercules. He was known uh, to be, uh, and still he in the theater, in the theater, sorry, no, in the in the circus, he he tried to put some hydraulic skills, and so he was the first to develop in the circus the um, water systems in the circles, like fountains and stuff. Um, but uh, at some point he was was not uh, was that he he knew that was not what he that was not his call. Uh, but the show business was going very well actually, and um, so actually the 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 company whatever they started to make a European tour, and he was going all over like Lisbon, even Lisbon here. So he was like all over. And eventually he he was going to Constantinople. Uh, I don't know if it was already called Istanbul by then, but anyway, Constantinople, Istanbul, there. Uh, so, but but to go there, he needed to make a make a stop uh, in Malta. And when he was in Malta, his life changed for the better, for the worse. I don't know, but <laughs> uh, he became a legend after that. So uh, what happens in Malta is that he meet a Turkish guy uh, that was working for Muhammad Ali, which was the Pasha of Egypt. And uh, the Pasha of Egypt wanted uh, uh, eventually like a hydraulic systems in his palace, uh, like fountains and stuff. And, uh, and so, um, <laughs> I mean, and uh, this Turkish guy, I don't remember, I don't know the name, uh, like Ismail something, Ismail something. He he found Belzoni in Malta and he's like, hey man, would you like to come to Egypt and work for the Pasha? And he's like, yes, <laughs> because he, he was on a tour. He, imagine this guy was on a tour, goes to Constantinople, he drops, he drops everything, he just goes. Actually, and he he came, he just goes to Egypt with uh, his uh, wife and uh, and somebody else from London uh, I don't remember the name like like a servant or something someone like that um, so he here he is 36 years old goes to Alexandria of Egypt and then he <laughs> then he uh, what happens there is he meet some important people like Drovetti Drovetti is an Italian guy that was uh, working for the French and he was already established in Egypt as a guy that was in charge of few things like for example archaeological sites for the French I mean this guy <laughs> Belzoni keeps on <laughs> touching <laughs> French uh, borders like I, I'm not sure if, if he was very very happy with the French uh <laughs> but anyway so um, and uh, what happens is that eventually he goes to Cairo because he had to meet the Pasha and goes and he started to to work for for the Pasha to build the fountain I don't even know if it was a fountain but something like the water system for his palace and it was a disaster <laughs> it was a disaster he did not the, the machine did not work and uh, so so yeah not not cool he was without a job so 
he met uh, a very important guy he was uh, an English guy uh, I don't know the name but it was Burkhardt which ended up to be a super friend and a super important uh, archaeologist and Egyptologist so he's one of the most important archaeologists uh, Egyptologists of, of, the, of all time uh, and they became friends and so Burkhardt recommended him to uh, <laughs> to Harry Salt so now <laughs> who knows what if it was a good if it was a good thing or not but uh, um, he basically found a job for for so so Harry Harry Salt was Harry, who was Harry Salt so Harry, Harry Salt was the council the British council in Egypt so again like this guy was going and keep meeting important like people whatever politicals politic people and and um, and uh, so Harry Salt was in Egypt also to get the most out uh, from Egypt in terms of uh, relics and antiquities and bring them to the British Museum so he this is the controversy uh, this is where the controversy happens is uh, basically Harry Salt hired Belzoni uh, as, a, as his guy that took care of taking things and ship them to London but Belzoni didn't see himself in this in that way Belzoni didn't see himself as an employee Belzoni saw himself as a, as, a, as a, probably as a as an adventurer or a, you know as a, as, a, as an archaeologist uh, so this is the the controversy here so uh, this is where everything in the future happens because of this controversy so 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 what happens is okay uh, Harry Salt wanted the big bust of Ramses the second to be shipped to London but it was, it was too big it was super big it was seven tons and it was in uh, Luxor in Tibes so and uh, so he sent Belzoni telling him man just don't drop it in the Nile just just don't drop it in the Nile and, and so Belzoni goes to Thebes and finds the big it's, it's so big and uh, well, I'm gonna tell you later about this so he goes to to Luxor and um, he, he takes the bust of Ramses uh, he actually hire uh, 18 local guys uh, which eventually refused to work for him and he just showed the gun and they eventually changed the, their mind <laughs> and so they made it to the Nile and it took like three weeks to move it to do, just to the bank of the Nile so it's like three kilometers I don't know it was like it just makes you think on <laughs> how much time can take to move stones uh, anyway so it was seven tons of granite and so, so they made it to the Nile and then he wrote a letter to, I don't know if it was the British Museum, but to London saying, hey, um, uh, I've, I've just shipped the, 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 the statue is on the way. And uh, the Harry Salt got the letter, changed the name and just <laughs> claimed uh, that he found and he moved and claimed the, you know, claimed the claim the discovery, not the discovery, but claim, you know, claim the, the, the success. Uh, now, uh, who, who is, uh, you know, who, who is the guy that uh, was supposed to get the success of the enterprise? Belzoni or Salt? Anyway, Salt get the money, so, sorry, Salt paid Belzoni to do that, so some people say, you know, it was Salt uh, merits, but I don't know, some others don't know, it was Belzoni, so, anyway, a never ending story. And so eventually they, and so the statue got to got to got to London, um, and so at this point he was like, okay, uh, I still have some time because he was paid for like six months. He was not just that job, and, um, and so he started to travel south, uh, following the the, the Abu, so he wanted to to reach Abu Simbel and uh, because uh, Barkhart his friend discovered Abu Simbel and but he didn't find the entrance so Belzoni wanted to find the entrance and so he went south uh, he actually uh, shipped down south with two British soldiers but they were not interested in 
archaeology that were interested in fighting the French. <laughs> yeah, this story. <laughs> and uh, and so so he he arrived to Abu Simba and he spent some time there. Uh, and he, there he was the the temple of Ramses the Second in Abu Simbel and uh, but it was all covered by sand. So he actually started to dig and take out the sand slowly, little by little. It was super hot. And he was uh, he couldn't stay there for a long time. It was too hot. And so and, and he he found the he found the entrance. And so he even left there in the rock in one of the stones his name because <laughs> you will see that this guy likes to to claim that uh, he did something important. And so, so you know, just the, he got two really good successes. He was uh, the first to well, the first. He he moved he, uh, the the statue of Ramses the Second to 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 Cairo and then shipped to London. And he got already known in Egypt in Egypt for for doing that. And then he was the first one to enter uh, the temple of Abu Simbel. After uh, two, more than well, whatever, like thousand years, three thousand years, I don't know. Uh, but so, and uh, at, at this point, at this point, he he's like, okay, now now I'm done in Abu Simbel. Uh, let's go back to Luxor. Um, and he goes back to Luxor and was full of French. <laughs> and so, and uh, the French spotted him and shooting him, and he they, he just missed. Like, you know, they missed him. He escaped to the from the west uh, side of the Nile to the east. Sorry, from the east side of, uh, of the Nile to the west side of the Nile, where he found himself in the so-called uh, area where the so-called Valley of the Kings. Uh, but it, that was, you know, was not that. You know, th that area was known to to have tombs and mummies. That's that is the dead part of the of of, of Luxor. Uh, and uh, so he met some friends there, like locals, uh, and uh, he, he he just started to. I mean, he this guy could not stop move. Like and so he he started to 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 dig because he knew that in that area the, there were some tombs, but the um, the locals say to him, hey, but uh, we we don't know if uh, we discovered all of them yet. Uh, and actually, if you find a tomb, you can find a treasure. And so he, this guy, okay, let's just go for it. And so he he dig somewhere, and boom, he found the tomb of Ai, which was the successor of uh, Tutankhamun. And then dig again, and he found the tomb of Seti the first, which was the father of uh, Ramses the second. And then the, the tomb is amazing. It's just. It's, it's just legendary. It's so like it's amazing. It's beautiful. And this guy keeps on having successes everywhere. It's like it's the, and so he discovered the tomb of Seti the first and the, the sarcophagus of Seti the first is in London in the John Saul Museum, which I'm gonna tell you later. And uh, this guy is just amazing. <laughs> and, and so after. Um, after this, he 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 tell he told to to Henry Henry Salt that he just discovered the tomb of Seti the first. Henry Salt comes to Luxor and show to his friends, hey look, this is the tomb of Seti the first. You know, I found it, blah blah blah. And Benzoni was like, no oh, man, like damn, <laughs> it's like <laughs> I shouldn't have told to this guy that I just discovered the tomb. And so then, you know, he was like, okay, let's just, let's just uh, go back, we'll go back to, go back to Cairo. And then when he was in Cairo, he got, he went straight to the council, the British council, and he found that all the antiquities that he was sending for Henry Salt were all there with the name of Salt. Uh, and so he was like, super pissed off, and he knew that he had to do something extraordinary. To get over the glory of Harry the Salt, the stolen glory of Harry the Salt, Harry the Salt, <laughs> Harry Salt, and and so he said, okay, let's just do something legendary. Let's try to enter Catherine Pyramid. <laughs> you know, in Giza you have three pyramids, no? The Great Pyramid, Catherine Pyramid, and Miserinus. So he 
try to enter the second pyramid. Uh, and after three weeks, he found the entrance of the Catherine Pyramid. <laughs> and so he went down the tunnel and then discovers the chamber. And like, he, he also discovered, in Borda he discovered that the tomb was already rubbed. So nothing was found inside, just the sarcophagus. And, and he, so what, so there is where he wrote Scoperta da Bezzoni, il 3 marzo, 1818. And, and this is interesting to note because he wrote it in Italian. So first of all, Italy was not a country back then, but the most important thing is he wrote it in Italian means that, it, it means that so for, take this guy, he lived in Italy in his young ages and then he went abroad and he even got the British citizenship when he was in London. So he was also like a British person, you know, like a citizen. But he still wrote it in Italian and there was something about being Italian back then for him. There was something to be proud of. And this is super interesting because Italy was not united yet. And actually Drovetti was working for the French. So you see... This uh, Italian thing back then was like, I think was uh, was interesting, like being uh, against the system in a way, was being Italian was maybe meaning uh, being against the system maybe, but, but this is my interpretation. And so, guys, so the, he found the entrance to the Catherine Pyramid, was the first man to enter the Catherine Pyramid after who knows who, because we don't know who robbed the, the pyramid first. Um, and then he got uh, told that uh, in the Red Sea there was uh, some like precious stone so he goes to the Red Sea and try to see uh, if he would have found some precious stones and uh, he found something but the most important thing he found was the city of Berenice with the, the ancient city of Berenice again another success and he's like he keeps on you know and, and then so from there it's like okay there is still one more thing you can do Belzoni we got an obelisk a giant obelisk like seven well not, I mean seven meters it's not too giant but uh, of granite um, down I, I think it was in Luxor but and uh, let's just you know just just ship it to to, <laughs> to London uh, and then he, he he took it and he put it on the ship and dropped it in the Nile. <laughs> But he, they, they got it back and then they shipped it uh, to, to the UK. Uh, and actually that obelisk will be fundamental to Champollion later, you know, like four years later, to... will be fundamental to, to help to, the, to get the hieroglyphs, you know, to, 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 to discover what, what the hieroglyphs were saying, to translate the hieroglyphs. So that was amazing, <laughs> you know, Belzoni keeps on being important and important. He was working in the circus in London, man, he was just... Oh, well, anyway, and, um, and so... Um, but in <laughs> the funny story about the obelisk is that he was told by a local that the hieroglyphs were saying this obelisk belongs to the family of Drovetti, which is nonsense, obviously, it's like... But he's like... Okay, well, if he's not mine, then okay. So at this point, he was like, okay, I think like I've got, I've done so many things in Egypt. I think like I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna do more. Like it's fine. I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. So he he decided to go back to um, to Padova, and uh, he was received with a lot of love, you know, whatever. He was really recognized in Padova as a as a guy that uh, really made a name for himself to be a discoverer and explorer and uh, you know and so people were quite were, were, were happy to have him back but he was not happy to be back <laughs> he went straight to london wrote a book uh which and the name of the book i'm gonna tell you now <laughs> so funny the name of the book is called Narrative of the operation and recent discoveries within the pyramids, temples, tombs and excavations in Egypt and Nubia and the journey of, to the coast of the Red Sea in search of the ancient Berenice and another to the oasis of Jupiter and Moon. By Giovanni <laughs> Battista Belzoni. <laughs> you know. Synthesis is the gift of God, whatever. And, uh, and so he was in London. He wrote this book to try to get the public... Um, 
tension against the claim of Henry Salt. And also he made the first exhibition, the first Egyptian exhibition in the world, in London, in the Egyptian Hall um, in Piccadilly. Um, interesting thing as well. And still, the, the problem that is back then, like Egyptomania, it uh, was kind of done. Like he did that exhibition, but then after, after a while, Egyptomania was not a thing anymore. And so people were not interested anymore in that, like, kind of glorified between the two. And he wrote to the British Museum, Hey guys, please, I've got some collection, private collection. Would you like to have my collection in the British Museum? He wanted his name uh, to be recognized. And they say, no, because we already got what we wanted. And he said, well, what do you mean? Like, what have you got? And I'm like, well, we got the things of Henry Salt. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's my stuff <laughs> but anyway and so so what happens there is he nothing he just uh, <laughs> he went actually so in London was not recognized in that way but he was recognized in all other countries when he was like uh, traveling abroad yeah even in Russia he, he like the Tsar who was like super happy to meet him and you know but he could not stay he will not stop moving <laughs> again and so he decided to go back not in Egypt but in Africa and to you know he, he, he wanted to go to Timbuktu and uh, I, this is my belief I might be wrong he wanted maybe to trace back the ancient Egyptian civilization where local people were telling him that were coming from the from the west of Egypt which is historically like uh, kind of true you know people from the west came to Egypt so but so he he wanted to do that and uh, he uh, legend I don't know how to say like he he died in the desert um, so you know uh, I think it was glorious the death died you know died traveling in the desert after this adventures it's uh, so and this is a short resume this is a short resume um, so I hope uh, you can you know there is a lot uh, of his uh, stories that you can find everywhere so I hope I mean this guy was so interesting to this guy was so interesting to, 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 to deep dive so said at the end uh, <laughs> Like concluding this this story is like, what is that we we want? You know, what is that matters the most? What is that we that we look for? Is the glory, right? Is the claiming of a success of somebody else? Who, which character would you prefer to be? Would you prefer to be Harry Salt to be remembered in a bit in in the British Museum with your collection of antiquities as the guy that? brought to, to to your own country the best antiquities of ancient Egypt? Is that what you want? Maybe you want that. Um, but let's make sure that you work hard for that. Because maybe that success it's is not what you're really looking for, you know. If the glory that you claim is not fruits of your work what do you feel you know what do you feel inside it must be empty so i'm i'm with belzoni in this i'm like i don't care like you know if i mean at, at some point he tried he tried to be you know to to get glorified but he was against uh, too much power you know the, the power of um, of salt and he was not British so he was he was never gonna go into the British Museum as a uh, and glorified and so no so I'm like okay like who won at the end the, the glory thing is like I, I'm with Belzoni because the success who felt the success who felt it who felt it it was Belzoni who had the most extraordinary life it was Belzoni not Henry Salt what do you mean by extraordinary? Well, did you, did Harry, like, Belzoni discovered whatever he discovered? 
He was the first to enter the Catherine Pyramid in the, in the modern times. Herisol didn't do that. How? So, so I mean, that second, when you get into the Pyramid of Catherine, it's like, hey, how? Like, you, nobody could pay, you know, for that moment ever anymore. There is no human being on this planet that can pay for that moment ever again. So it's like, and so, you know, all of these moments that Berzoni had in his life, they're not payable, not even for the queen or for the king of anyone. So who had, who won at the end? Who had the best experiences? You know, it was Belzoni. <laughs> so I, I'm totally with him and uh, I'm not with uh, Harry, Harry Salt, although he, you know, he's written in the British Museum as the guy that collected everything. Fine, okay, good, okay, well, not fair, but you know, fine, fine, I don't care. <laughs> because, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, Belzoni lived the most uh, extraordinary life. So, at the end, you know, uh, if I was Belzoni, I wouldn't be so uh, resentful. I would like me, you know, man, fuck it. <laughs> See you soon for the next one. <laughs>